My name is Giancarlo Guerrero, and I am the music director of the National Symphony. I grew up playing percussion, so I always love to tell people that I came from the back of the orchestra with two sticks, now I'm in the front with one. There are so many great sources of inspiration. For me, it can be anything from watching my kids playing Dance Dance Revolution upstairs, to watching my dog uh, come and lie next to me, to watching a beautiful sunset. Inspiration comes in so many ways and forms, and in the end, it's about us recognizing it and how it can make our lives better. Living in Nashville, Tennessee, I've been very fortunate that a lot of my neighbors and close friends are people from across different musical genres. And I have to say that somebody that I would really love the chance is Alison Krauss. Uh, I've become a huge fan of her music, especially after she did that great album with Robert Plant and, you know, being a great Led Zeppelin fan myself, it's like the combination of all worlds. But she looks like a really cool uh, person and I would love the chance not only to, you know, collaborate musically, but uh, get to know personally as well. From a conducting point of view, the best advice I've ever gotten came from a musician in one of the major orchestras in the United States. When he came up to me after a rehearsal, he said, you know, Giancarlo, it's better to have bad ideas than no ideas. As long as they are yours, orchestras will always respond to them. And you know what? I try to live my conducting life in that way because um, he's absolutely right in the sense that sometimes young conductors, we tend to be scared of, of maybe asking too much or we don't want to change the status quo, especially if it's an orchestra that knows the repertoire so well, whether it's the Chicago Symphony or the Vienna Philharmonic. Oh, they played Beethoven so many times, they don't need to do anything new. And that's not actually the, the case. In most cases, even the most uh, conservative orchestra will always want their conductors to inspire them and to bring new ideas. And uh, since that was given, that little nugget of great information was given to me, I use it every day because musicians will always tell very quickly if the ideas that you bring are truly your own and whether you're being honest. Otherwise, they're gonna be able to smell the blood in the water and they're gonna eat you alive. My guilty pleasure changes almost from hour to hour, from day to day, especially being at home. Uh, I come up with new things uh, uh, to, uh, to keep myself entertained. And I have to say that I found two recent ones that I'm kind of stuck with. One is watching old episodes of Columbo. If you remember that wonderful 1970s uh, uh, police detective, I am now hooked and watching it all the time. And the other one was that I discovered one of my daughter's Nintendo Switch. And when I was growing up, I used to play a lot of video games. And I actually found a game called Doom, which is uh, not quite for little children, but you know what? It's a great way to release, uh, you know, some tension. And uh, I've been battling zombies over the last couple of days. And you know what? It's, uh, it's a nice little change from having to learn some Mozart and Beethoven. Oh, this one is an easy question for me. Growing up, the only thing I liked to play was being pilot. And if I actually is on my bucket list, I would love to learn how to fly planes. And if I wasn't doing this, I think I would be as happy being a commercial pilot and flying the really big planes. And to this day, I am the one person that walks onto the plane like a little kid and I always sneak in and, and look into the cockpit. I still get fascinated by it. And um, I can only imagine what that must feel like. Well, it must be like conducting, you know, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony with the Boston Symphony at Tanglewood. <laughs> Those people that know me well uh, know that I actually don't drink very much. I drink very, very little, but on a special occasion, uh, I would love to have a diet Cuba Libre. That has become kind of my thing. I started on this whole diet and before that, I really liked the sweet drinks, like the grasshoppers and the uh, white Russians. But I kind of gave those up uh, in you know, trying to make myself better. But I will tell you that nowadays, whenever I, after a concert, it's a special performance or it's a special colleague I've been working with, uh, it's funny when I when we go out to the dinner afterwards and I do end up ordering an alcoholic drink that the whole table kind of goes like, what? I mean, what's going on here? And they start taking actually pictures and, and, and texting my wife, can you believe this? And so, I, I'm not much of a drinker, but when it does happen, I guess it's, uh, for those who know me, it's a moment of shock and they want to share it with the world, you know, so.
Oh, well, 